everyone, I'm Anna Rose Bain. As art instructors, we tend to focus almost entirely on teaching someone how to paint and draw, but what about all the other stuff that goes along with being a professional artist? I'm talking marketing, having a website, branding, social media, photographing your artwork. What about all of that? Well, in today's video, I would love to share some of the things I've learned about taking a photograph of your painting, putting it in Photoshop, and editing it so that it matches your painting exactly. That way you have a great image that you can use for social media, for your website, and for entering in competitions. There's so much that you can do with this program. Um, I just love it. I use it almost every single day for one reason or another. And so hopefully, um, even though this is gonna be a bit of a crash course, hopefully you enjoy and learn a thing or two and are able to uh, apply that to your own art and um, it'll help you just have better quality images for showcasing to your collectors, to your galleries, and to competitions. So I hope you enjoy. So here we are, I am on my laptop. I'm gonna go ahead and open a file with Photoshop and I have the latest version of Photoshop. Um, I subscribe to the Adobe Cloud. That's pretty much the only way you can get it these days. It used to come on CDs and you could load it to a number of different devices around your home. But nowadays they have everything streamlined, so it's all on the cloud. You can get all the updates and stay um, kind of up to date on what's going with the programs. And, you know, sometimes that's a great thing. Other times it's like these programmers just sit around and get bored and come up with ways to confuse us <laughs> and then they change it on us. But anyway, here we go. I have uh, opened up this image in Photoshop. As you can see, I've set up my workspace so that I've got history over here on the right, as well as layers. And those are really the only sidebar windows I'm interested in having for this particular project. I also have my toolbar on the left over here, and that has um, a number of really important tools that I'll be using today, which we'll talk about as we go. Um, you can change the color scheme of your workspace. You can change it so that it's a lighter gray, darker gray, white, whatever you want, whatever's easier for you to see. And you can also set up your rulers here at the top and bottom so that they are set for inches or centimeters or whatever unit of measurement you'd prefer. Now, I use the control minus and control plus keys to zoom in and zoom out. So control plus would be zooming in here. You can go all the way in. You can also use the space bar and click with your mouse or your pen to move around the image. And that's probably the easiest and fastest way to move around on the screen. So I'm gonna control minus, zoom back out just for a second. And the first thing I'm gonna do with this image is I'm going to copy the layer, meaning I'm going to create an exact copy of what this is on top of it. So I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcut control J to create a copy. If you wanted to do it manually through the buttons up here, you could go to layer and go down to, let's see, duplicate layer. So that would do the same thing as control J. Um, I highly recommend memorizing the keyboard shortcuts because it's gonna save you so much time in the long run. So now that I've got my layer copy, you can see that over here. The layer that I'm gonna be working on is selected here in the dark gray and it's over the top of our background, which was the, the first layer that we had when we opened our image. Um, now that I've made my copy, I'm gonna go up to edit and transform and skew. And as you can see, it creates this box around the layer, which has these this little blue line and some squares. And you can use the squares to drag your image and twist it in any way you need to to change the aspect ratio and the perspective. Um, the original image, you could see it was kind of skewed just because um, I took a shot of the painting while it was still on the easel and it wasn't straight on. So I'm using this tool to kind of bring my edges of the painting and make them square. So I'm just gonna drag from the corners. I'm kind of eyeballing it. If you wanted to, you could drag from a top ruler up here and kind of use that as a unit of measurement. You can put it back if you want and just have it there for reference. You could drag it from the side. That looks pretty good actually, so I'm gonna just keep those rulers out of the way there. 
I'm going to keep it as is like this and I'm going to go ahead and click that check mark to save the changes. Now what that did is it straightened my image but it also stretched it out a little bit. So the original painting is a 9 by 12 and I want to make it so that it's that exact aspect ratio. Now over here you can see I've hovered over the rectangular marquee tool. The shortcut for that is the letter M on your keyboard. And I'm going to select that. And up here you get some options. You can decide if you want it to be um, a fixed ratio, meaning um, right now I have it set to 12 by 9. And that's just the ratio, it's not the actual size. If you wanted to, you could also select fixed size and then you could choose the exact inches or centimeters or dimensions that you want for you for the selection. Now I'm going to go with fixed ratio. I already have it set to 12 by 9 so I'm going to drag from the corner and select over the image and that shows me that I need to change the image so that it's a little bit tighter um, and bring in the side there from the left or from the right, whichever direction. So in order to do that, I'm going to go up here to the move tool. The keyboard shortcut for that is the letter V and they have this handy little reminder here whenever you hover over the tool um, that shows you that. So I'll, I have that selected and if I were to just drag from the corners, it would change the size, but it wouldn't change the aspect ratio at all. So in order to change the image and just change it from one side, I need to hit the shift key as I'm going. And so that allows me to sort of squish the image or stretch it out however I want um, as I'm pulling from that middle square there. So I'm going to bring it to what I think might be about a 12 by 9. I'll hit the check mark. Then I'm going to go back to my rectangular marquee and check again to see if I've gotten it any closer to a 12 by 9. Not quite. It needs a little bit more. So I'll hit the V keyboard shortcut and hit shift as I drag it over just a little bit more. I can hit enter instead of the check mark um, to save some time there. I'm going to use the M key to select the marquee again and we'll check it one more time. And you know what? That's pretty close. So you can use the arrow keys to move your selection over if you need to by a few pixels here and there. So once I have it where I want it, I'm going to go up to Image and Crop. And oddly enough, there's no keyboard shortcut for cropping. So you still have to, every time you have to go up there and select it under the Image tab. And uh, I can either click off of the image or um, use the keyboard shortcut Control D to deselect. But there you go. Now we have a cropped, proportionally sized image. And sometimes I'll zoom in just to check my edges. So well, let's see. It looks like there's a little bit of uh, some of that easel in the background right here along the bottom corner. So I'm going to hit the marquee tool one more time reselect and make sure that I crop off just that tiny bit of um, brown that's making my image not quite as clean of a crop. So we'll go ahead and crop that a little tighter and deselect with control D or again you can just click outside of the image anywhere and that will deselect it for you. Okay so if I were to hover over layer one and then click this little eyeball icon you can see the before and the after, before and after. So I have made my image slightly smaller by cropping it. That's okay. Um, hopefully my camera settings had it so that it was set up to be a fairly large image to begin with. And if you look at the rulers up here, it's showing that it's about 46 inches across and 34 inches high. So that's another point I wanna bring up. Um, my camera for some reason has it set so that the photos are taken at 72 dpi and that's how they load into photoshop so if i want it to be 300 dpi which is what um, most competitions require um, for entering your images then i would go up to image and image size and then over here you can see the keyboard shortcut for that is alt Control i and over here we've got pixels or the option for pixels we've got the option for inches centimeters i want to go to 
Um, actually, first thing I want to do is change the resolution. Right now, the resolution is set to 72, so I want to change that. But I also want to make note of how many pixels across this is. So before I change the resolution, uh, I want to make sure that I'm staying with that number of pixels. So if I change this to 300, I want to remember that the width was 3337. And because I've got it set to um, ch continuing with the same aspect ratio, the height will change automatically with the width. And then I'll just hit OK. And as you can see, nothing changes except that now it's set to 300 DPI instead of 72. Um, so the next thing I want to do is look at getting rid of some of this specular highlighting. And that's all it is, is, you know, these little tiny bumps and dots of white that you see all over the image. Those are basically just showing that your painting is three dimensional. And those are spots where some of that thicker paint or texture in the canvas caught the light when you took the photo. And most of the time we don't notice it when we're looking at a painting in person. But when we have a photograph of a painting, it's not very pleasant to look at and it kind of distracts from the image. So in order to get rid of those, I'm going to zoom in on some of these areas. And the next tool I'm going to show you, if you go over here to the toolbar, is the patch tool. Now if I were to hit um, either hold down on that button so that you can see the sidebar that comes up, which reveals the spot healing brush tool or the healing brush tool, there's all these other options that we can choose from. The first thing I'll show you is the patch tool. And again, the keyboard shortcut for all of these is the letter J. But what the patch tool does, and you can see me selecting this little area and then dragging it to another area, it's copying the area that I'm dragging it to. So this is one way that you can get rid of these little speckles. And I always drag them to somewhere really nearby where that little speck was. So you can really tell that there's um, no change to the image except that that specular highlighting has been removed. The other option is to click on the spot healing brush tool. And what that does, you can see this little brush icon that comes up. It's a kind of a circular shape. And if I, let's see, if I use the bracket keys to make it bigger, hopefully you can see that it's getting bigger. I can use the other bracket to make it smaller. And you can click on each little dot and they disappear magically. It's just kind of amazing what this technology does. So you can probably imagine this ends up being rather time consuming if you have a painting with a lot of specular highlighting. And sometimes it doesn't work the first time, so you have to keep trying. Sometimes it makes changes that are maybe a little bit too dramatic, like what I just did there. So I'll change it back to the patch tool and just drag that over. So sometimes you have to find ways to be creative to do this editing, but ultimately um, your image is going to look so much better if you can get rid of those little pinprick white spots. Of course, the better you photograph your painting and the less glare you have on it, the less you'll have to deal with this kind of thing. Um, it's almost impossible to avoid. So. Um, I just end up making it part of my routine when I'm editing a photo for my website. Let's say we got rid of all that specular highlighting and now we're moving on to color correction. The goal for this is to just try to match our colors as exactly to the painting as we can. So often I'll have the painting right next to me by the computer while I'm working in and hopefully it's lit up enough so that you can see um, relatively well the difference between the screen and the painting. Depending on the light source that you photographed your painting under, you might need to actually change the temperature of your, your image. In this one, for example, the reds in her face are actually oversaturated. So that's something I wanna address for this photo. And what I'm gonna do is instead of changing everything on the painting, I'm just gonna select one area of it. I'll select the face and I'm gonna use the lasso tool, which is up here underneath the marquee tool. And it, what it does is if you use your pen or your mouse to drag along a section of the painting, you can outline an area, however big or small you want, and it will only make changes within that selection. 
Um, before I do anything with this, I want to feather my selection or soften the edges of it so that the changes I make don't end up looking like they have sharp edges on them. So to do that, I can go up to select and we'll go to modify and feather. And the keyboard shortcut for that is alt control D. Now I have it set to 40 pixels for feathering. That's usually pretty good. If you had it down to like five or six, that probably wouldn't be enough. We want the bigger the pixel feather, the, the softer the edge. So we'll go with about 40. And as you can see, it kind of changed that selection and softened it a little bit. Now, if you don't like having that squiggly line around your image, you can hit Control H to hide it. Control H will also bring it back. So I like to hide it while I'm making my changes just so that I can see what it's doing overall. Now, in order to change the color, there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can go up to Image, Adjustments, and then there's all these areas where you can change brightness and contrast. You can change lights and darks. You can change the exposure. Probably the ones I use the most are brightness and contrast, hue saturation, and color balance. And I think for this one, we're going to go to hue saturation. There's also a keyboard shortcut for that. It's Control U. Um, when I was still learning Photoshop, I just got tested on these things. So I, I, I studied for it like it was a test and had to memorize them. And I'm really glad I ended up doing that because it just saves me so much time. And of course, these boxes that come up, you can drag them around. If they're in the way, you can move them off to the side so you can see what you're doing. But they come up with all these little sliders. And so you could bring it more towards the reds Ooh. or uh, any direction you want. I'm really not going to change the hue because the hue is pretty accurate. What I want to change is the saturation of the reds. So up here you can see we've got master. If you click on that you can go to reds and it'll only change or affect the reds in that selection. So if I drag it down look you can see what happens. There's a lot of red in her face so I want to make sure I'm not doing too much but if I bring it down to like a negative nine or something like that and then click on preview here, you can see the before. Wow, very bright. And then after we've softened that color a little bit. There's also the option to change the value of the color you're changing. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to click OK. If I wanted to change the contrast in this image, which is another change I often make to my images, I would go up to image adjustments and brightness and contrast. And again, another little window pops up with these sliders and you can just play with them. You know, it brings down the brightness, bring it back to zero here because it's pretty good. Let's see, zero. Um, and contrast, if you slide it to the left, the contrast is reduced, slide it to the right and it'll bring it up. So you can play around with that as well. There's just all these wonderful options um, that you can use in Photoshop, but the probably the most helpful thing that you can do versus some of the apps that you might get on your phone or some of the freebies that are offered out there is the ability to crop accurately and make really accurate tight selections with things like the lasso tool or the marquee tool. So um, that is what I would do in a nutshell. I'm going to go ahead and merge these layers. So if the top layer is selected, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut control E and merge it down. Now you can see there's just one layer there. And then I'm going to go to File, Save As, and save it as a new image. Whatever you want to title it is fine. And then hit Save. And then this box will come up with JPEG options. And I like to have that slider all the way to the right so it's at maximum image quality. You can see right here that it's set to 3.9 megabytes, which is a great size for a 300 DPI image. Not too big, not too small. And I'm going to hit OK. And that is how I prepare an image for putting on my social media, putting it on the web. If you want it to be 72 DPI for web, you can just go back to image size up here and change the resolution, knowing that once you do that, it's going to make the pixel size also smaller. So keep that in mind. You can change these in this box however you need to for competition entries and so forth. So anyway, I hope you found this very quick crash course in editing a photo of your painting helpful, and I look forward to bringing more tutorials for you in the future.